let's take a look at the idea of moving averages. On the graph here, we can see monthly sales figures for some company. Uh, as you can see, they're very erratic and it's very difficult to glean any important information out of those figures. The technique known as moving averages kind of flattens out these curves to see if there is any kind of trend in them. So let's have a look. I'm going to look at a two-month moving average, and that's the blue line on the graph. And what it does is it basically, each two-month period, it just plots the mean or the average of those two months. And so this point here is the average of these two months. This point is the average of these two months, etc. Well, it hasn't done much uh, to the nature of our curve. Let's look at a three-month moving average. Well, that's flattened it out quite considerably. And the effect of that is that you can see that the sales on the whole are sort of gradually, rather slowly increasing. If we looked at four months at a time, well, once again, same sort of thing. Five months at a time, a similar gradual increase. And six months, once again, similar gradual increase. So we're able to use uh, this technique uh, to look at a gradual increase in sales, even though the original figures are not easy to see that. Let's reset our graph and look at the process of generating moving averages in a little bit more detail. And we'll start off by generating a two-month moving average for some figures that we'll give for ourselves. Let's say we started off with this figure and that figure. Then the first of the two-month moving averages is going to be plotted at this point, which is the mean of the two values. You can see this over on the right. The mean of these two numbers is this number. And it's plotted halfway between those two numbers. If we have another point, once again, it's plotted halfway between the second and the third, as in this diagram, etc., etc. Reset. Let's have a look at some three-month moving averages. Well, it should be quite clear that what we do need is three months before we get even our first point. And the first point, this value, is the mean or average of these three values, and it's plotted exactly in the middle of the three values, in other words, on the second month. The next one, plotted in between the second and the fourth values, and it's plotted at the third month. It's the mean of these three numbers, etc., etc. Whatever we do, we're going to get a mean of three numbers, and it's going to be plotted right in the middle of those three numbers. Reset and look at four-month moving average. Now, obviously, you're going to need four months of information before you can plot that first point. And once again, it's the mean of those first four months, and it's plotted right in the middle of those first four months, which in this case is halfway between the second and the third month. And the process carries on like that. Whatever the figures are, the four-month moving average will be plotted in the middle of a four-month period, and its value will be the mean of those four months figures. And it's a similar story with five-month and six-month moving averages.